Hello and welcome back to the Virtual Pilot Flying Channel. In this video, we're going to take a look at the Volanta Flight Tracking System. I love this application. I really do. I've been using it since the summer of last year. I think I first started using it in August of uh, last year. I started out with the free version and liked what I saw and then I upgraded to the premium version and that's what I'm running right now. It comes in uh, three flavors. You have the free version, you have the browser version, you have premium, and is there another one? Oh yes, you have the mobile apps. You can run Volanta on Android or Apple devices. So those are the things that uh, you can run Volanta on again. I have the premium version. So let's dig into Volanta and see what it does for you. So I'm logged in and anytime you log in you get this panel right here. This is version uh, 1.4 and what they've done is they've given you this tab for rosters. We'll look at the roster as we go through this video and they've added a browser. They did have Navigraph as uh, one of the tabs over here on the right side but they switched out Navigraph and brought in the browser and you can see this is the Volanta website right here you can go in and download the desktop version you can open up in a browser and again you can get the mobile app and also the uh, premium version also again I started out with the free desktop version and again when I saw what it did, I went ahead and upgraded to the premium version. So, here's how this works. You run your flight simulator. Volanta connects to the flight simulator or the flight simulator connecting to Volanta, whichever way you want to look at that. The simulator feeds data to Volanta and it tracks everything about a flight. Things like the altitude you're at, your heading, and a lot more. So we'll take a look at all of that when we take a look at flights here. These are VATSIM coverage, ATC coverage areas right here. You see highlight right, highlighted right here? I want to turn that off momentarily because if I try to get on my aircraft, I might just um, activate ATC coverage area here. So let me turn that off. Go to Map Settings and then find VATSIM ATC coverage and that's right there so you'll see it go off when I click here so there we go so I just wanted to get that out of the way momentarily here's my aircraft right here and so I want to center up on that let me close this panel here so I want to center up on that I click this I come over to my active flight board right here and this little button right here called flight or follow flight I click it and it will center up on my aircraft so I can now scroll down on the aircraft and there's Miami so one of the first things that I do is I go and I set up my map I'm going to scroll back out so we can see more of the world here I'm going to go to map settings and one of the first things that I do is I turn off stuff that I don't want to see on the map cluttering up the map. Down here, load nav data. You can load in nav, Navigraph data and it will place that data on the map. This is from the current cycle. But what I need to do to be able to do this, I come over to settings. So, and then I connect to Navigraph. When you come into settings the first time, these will all be white and you can click them to authorize whatever connection you want, Discord, Navigraph, or Twitch. You just click them, you'll log into the site, the appropriate site, either Discord, Navigraph, or Twitch, and the authorization will happen in Volanta so now you have a connection to either one of those connections there Discord, Navigraph or Twitch 
So I've authorized Navigraph. I've authorized Twitch. And I've authorized Discord. I've placed my VATSIM ID on this line here, and we'll see why in a bit. And I also did my SimBrief username, and we'll see why I did that also. And once you get everything set up, you just click Save Changes, and your connections have been updated successfully. So that's over in Settings. And you get to Settings, go back to the map, by clicking on this gear in your upper right-hand corner, and that'll take you to Settings. Go back to the map. Again, you can really clutter your map up with a lot of... Uh, a lot of things it makes it hard to see your map and all the aircraft and things along that line so how how does the map get cluttered in the first place well we download our nav data data from Navigraph so I'm going to load up the nav data there's the current cycle 2301 now, if I want to do some oceanic flying, either off to Asia or off to Europe, I can bring in the PACOTS, which is the Pacific Organized Track System, or the NAT Tracks, North Atlantic Track System, by clicking Prescribe Tracks right here, and then selecting either one or both, you'll be able to see the tracks the oceanic track system displayed on your map and there we go there's North Atlantic and there's the Pacific right there and I can turn them off uncheck and off they go but you always want to if you have a Navigraph subscription just load in that Navigraph data onto your map so now I have all of the fixes, nav aids, airways, both upper and lower, available to me on the map. All right, so see all of the fixes here? Man, that can really clutter you up. Let's go back. Really clutter your map. So if we want to get rid of that, and it still doesn't have uh, a number of fixes. But let's see. Yeah, okay, it turned it off anyway. Even though it didn't present a number, it still turned it off. Okay, so that's fixes. Navigate. Go down a little bit closer. See if we can pick up any navigate. There's one right there. PGS, uh, I forget, page? I, I, don't remember what PGS is, but that's a nav aid. I can turn it off. Watch it disappear when I click nav aids over here on the map panel. And there it goes. We have airways, upper and lower, and all of them are labeled. You can get, you can keep the airways or the uh, whatever is represented at, like uh, nav aids. You can keep the labels on all of this, your nav aids and your airways, but and then you can turn them off too. So the labels, click on labels, it turns the labels off. And then it turns the labels back on, just with a click. So usually I don't fly with the airways turned on, so I turn them off, like upper airways is turned on right now, and you'll see all the airways disappear. So that declutters the map for you, so you don't have a lot of things on your map getting in your way. You go back and over to Miami, I'm going to center back up on Miami, where my aircraft is, by clicking this follow flight up here. And it will center back to where my aircraft is. And you see that Miami center is up and running. Let me turn that off. That's under ATC coverage right here. And that's off. So I don't see that. But I can turn it back on when I need to. The ATC coverage is really handy when you're flying. But when you try to click on an aircraft sometimes to get information about a particular aircraft. Like if I click here, I can see information about that particular flight. 
the sky is out. Left Houston going to P P Arco. I've never flown into that air airport, but it looks like it's down here. And this Trinidad Tobago looks like it's where it is. So but if you have the uh, have the ATC coverage map turned on, sometimes it's kind of hard unless you really go down close and get on that aircraft. It's kind of hard sometimes to pick the aircraft up. And there it is right there. Sometimes you'll be on the aircraft, you think you're on the aircraft, your mouse will move and you'll click and you'll get the center information and there's information about Miami Center right here. So the next thing we want to look at is how do I import a SimBrief plan into Volanta. Very easy. Now I've shown you over in settings and under connections I've given Volanta my username for SimBrief. So that's set up. Go back to the map. Let's import a flight plan from SimBrief into Volanta. The flight plan that you'll import is the current generated flight in SimBrief. We click on Add Plan, and then Import from SimBrief, and there's my flight right there. There it is, and I see on the map the route. Let me collapse this. I see the route from Miami all the way down to Mexico City. It's just that easy. If you're going to be flying on that sim, now I need to point out one thing here. Let's go back to settings and then to connections. Here's IVAO if you fly on IVAO. Pilot Edge if you fly on Pilot Edge. FS Cloud or Project Fly. These are the networks that are available to you to fly on. I fly on VATSIM. If you do IVAL, give it your username for IVAL. Same Pilot Edge, FS Cloud, Project Fly. Do your username. Just type them in here and you're, you're set. And then make sure you save your changes. So now I have this flight into Volanta. So Volanta now will start tracking this flight. It will start providing statistics on the statistics tab here. It will show me my altitude, heading, ground speed, time remaining to your destination, estimated arrival time, and then the remaining distance to your destination in nautical miles. Here's the route right there. This profile area here, it'll graphically depict your altitudes, any elevations that you're going to be transiting. If you take off from Los Angeles, let's say, and you're flying east, you'll have to cross the Tehachapi Mountains. And so the profile will show the Tehachapis, and then you'll see as you do your climbing you'll see it being graphically depicted and you'll see yourself clearing the, clearing the Tehachapi Mountains. You can put any notes in that you want and all screenshots that you take will be uh, in this area here. Here's a screenshot right here. This guy took a screenshot. We can take a look at that screenshot and that was a screenshot. And You can like the screenshot since I have it open, I'll just like the screenshot that this pilot did here. And then click anywhere and it'll close that screenshot and you'll be back on your map. So that's how easy it is to bring in a flight plan from SimBrief. Now if you're going to be flying, say on the VATSIM network and you want to pre-file on VATSIM, you can also pre-file this flight here. Click on pre-file, go to VATSIM, there's IVAL, 
there's Pilot Edge, and there's uh, Poscon. So you choose the one that you want. In my case, I'll choose the Sim, And then there is my pre-file flight plan. And then when I want to file that plan, come down to the bottom and file plan. That's it. So now you have that plan pre-filed on VATSIM or IVAO or whatever network you're on. So it is just that easy. So now this flight will be tracked. Another item that I like is schedules and this is only available in the desktop version. Schedules. Schedules work like this. I can schedule a flight. These flights when I say schedule a flight, these flights, the data is pulled off the Flight Aware website. Show you how this works. I want to fly from, let's say from Miami. So on the map, I'll go to Miami. So I've zoomed in on Miami. And I'll click the pink button right here. And it will place Miami on this panel over here from Miami and then another thing that it did is now shows me all of the destinations out of Miami for all airlines that fly out of Miami aircraft all of that now I want to fly to some destination I'll look and see what it does here Miami and it has the air barrel that shows that Miami is the departure. So let's say I want to do a transoceanic and I'm going to go to uh, Europe. Let's say um, Madrid. So I click Madrid and it places Madrid's ICAO code for the airport onto the panel here from Miami to Madrid. And I'll see all of the flights that leave Miami for Madrid. So there's one, two, three, four, five. There's five schedules for Miami to Madrid. The first one here, Miami to Madrid. Departure time is 2040 Z. And the arrival time is 0505 Zulu. There's the call sign, again, Madrid, or Miami, Madrid, 8 hours and 25 minutes, it's in the 787-8, and the mileage is 3,838 miles, 3,838 nautical miles. Tuesday and Friday is when this schedule is flown. The next one, still the same call sign American Airlines 68 but this particular schedule takes place on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Saturday and Sunday so we have two flights with the same call sign going from Miami to Madrid just this one here goes out on Tuesday and Friday and this one here goes out on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Saturday and Sunday the next one down and this is American Airlines. The next one down. And you see the airline. You see the airline for this one. And you can add these to the roster. The roster is right here. What makes this useful is you can schedule flights ahead of time, several days before you actually fly it. And it's useful because a lot of times you'll want to do a flight and then when you want to start configuring that flight you forget what flight it was that you wanted to fly so this is a helpful reminder for flights that you want to fly sometime in the future so if I were to choose this one right here it's American Airlines I click it and then add to roster and you're going to see it being added to the roster right down here in the lower right hand corner of the um, of the screen. So I'm going to add it to the roster and now it's being added to the roster. And there it is right there. You can remove it or you can say fly now. Now another interesting thing too 
when you do this, when you schedule a flight and you add it to the roster, at the destination airport, notice what we get at the destination airport. Did you notice something? What happened on the map? I scheduled a flight from Miami to Madrid. Added that to the panel. Now, on the map, I have flights from Madrid and where they go throughout the world. So if I want to do a follow-on flight from Madrid to somewhere, I can schedule that. So if I want to go back to Miami, I see the flight leaves Madrid and then back to Miami. Right there, that line right there. Or if I want to go down to, what is this, Cancun, I believe. Yep, Cancun. If I want to go to Cancun, uh, Cabo's not on here. They don't fly from Madrid to Cabo, but wherever I want to fly, if I want to use the flight from the FlightAware system, because this all comes from FlightAware, then I can fly from Madrid uh, all the way to Los Angeles. I can fly from Madrid over to Hong Kong. Uh, this is uh, into China. Notice no flights to Japan or Korea, nothing down to Oceania, but I do have flights from Madrid throughout, going throughout the world, American Airlines, you see American Airlines here, Air Canada, so this is very, very useful. I like that feature. Okay, so we'll go back and all that stuff will drop off the map and back into maps. So, Volanta, remember it tracks everything about your aircraft. Let's take a look at what gets tracked. So here's a flight that was completed. This was uh, from Sacramento to Dallas-Fort Worth. It was in the 738. 737-800 PMD, PMDG flavor statistics about that flight before we go there uh, notice that uh, there's our call sign there's a call sign again the aircraft and the aircraft registration I go into statistics I see information about total block time from pushback to at the destination engines off I see my flight time three hours and three minutes my landing rate simulator the flight path the route 1298 nautical miles was the distance from Sacramento to Dallas flew it on the 10th of February 2023 landing g-force see the number here 17,800 uh, pounds of fuel was burned on that flight had 118 passengers and 134 knots on the landing speed there's a profile right there I took off from uh, Sacramento this this brown here this elevation that's the Sierra Nevada mountains right there and I see the profile so that's the information that it pulls for you into Volanta see that completed flight uh, the number of flights that I've taken while in the Volanta system is 135 flights I've traveled 242,000 miles and that equates to 11.2 trips around the world so even that information gets captured for you now that I've brought in go back to our map here now that I've imported this flight here from SimBrief, I have the flight plan or the flight briefing tab over here, and there's the SimBrief OFP. Brings that right into Volanta for you. And you can choose what format, just like you can over in SimBrief itself, you can choose what format you want your OFP to be in. 
here we go back to settings and then under is it under general no it's under planning under planning I chose the Lido format and there's AOL or American Airlines or Canada or France and you can scroll through and see the different formats same formats you'll see over in Simbrief so I've chosen Lido Lido for me is the easiest one to read for me and then your briefing units whether you want them in kilograms or pounds so we have everything in pounds here go back to the OFP and see my takeoff fuel and my block fuel my alternate fuel contingency fuel I see what uh, time my flight is off if you're used to reading the sim brief OFPs this is going to be no different one thing that does get added however to the uh, OFP in Volanta is this right here you can copy this to the clipboard bang and uh, you can use it somewhere else so that's a nice little feature that we have in Volanta also well that's about it for this video well let me go into settings before I get out of here and uh, look at some stuff here so here's my account right here notice I can log out I can set up multi-factor authentication change my password delete the account right from this page right here data import I can import data from sim toolkit pro you see I've imported 57 flights and 40 aircraft from uh, sim toolkit pro over into Volanta the connections we looked at that earlier I'm on premium I won't show the billing page premium that is the version that I have under general you can check for updates I'm running the latest version check for updates it'll go in and see if there's any updates no update is available because I'm on the current version 1.4.14 in English um, my atmospheric pressure I've set to be in uh, inches of, of mercury uh, the opacity I've set for the weather uh, to be low uh, weather radar color is Titan and you have different options here that you can choose I've left this general section as is I haven't changed anything there simulators Microsoft flight simulator there's my community where my community folder is located and then the plug-in for Microsoft flight simulator the plug-in for Volanta really uh, let's see what else we have here simulator scenery I can scan for install scenery right here streamer tools if you want to do streaming you're planning we looked at that earlier every five minutes for an auto save screenshots there's where my screenshots will be saved to right here and uh, support information and then the change log itself that's all under the settings area you click on the gear here it'll take you to the settings area uh, activities aero caches that's the treasure hunt you have challenges countries uh, you can pick any country you want to fly around any country events that are upcoming let's see what we got upcoming snowy night operations uh, live out of uh, Colorado Springs in Colorado to uh, Pueblo Colorado that was yesterday today we have the Berlin real ops morning edition and on down the line so you can join any one of those events that you want let's go back and then there's schedules we already looked at schedules go back to the map now before we get out of here let's take a look at one last thing aircraft I have aircraft over in Simbrief and I want those same aircraft available to me in Volanta but I need to add those aircraft to Volanta now one of the first things that I do we can see here an image here when I download liveries from flightsim.tl I take a screenshot of one of the pictures of that livery and I save it 
down to hard drive because I want to use that image on my aircraft when I add the aircraft to Volanta. So let me show you how that is done here. I come up to aircraft and I'll see all of the aircraft that I've loaded or added to Volanta. Again, these are the same aircraft that I have over in SimBrief. So I want to add an aircraft in. I'm just going to add an aircraft. It's not in SimBrief. Just show you how this is done. So to add an aircraft, I click on this plus sign up here, Add Aircraft. Give a registration and we'll call this November 765 Uniform Juliet and then ICAO code. So I'm going to make this a, um, a B787 is what I'll do. And then create aircraft. So there's the aircraft created. Now I want to go and add an image up in this area right here. I'm going to add an image. To do that, I'll come and click on this button here, Upload Image. It's going to take me over to where all of my images are located on hard drive. You can see the path right here. This is a 787. I'm going to scroll down to 787. And there's the 787 American Airlines, and there's a, just a straight 787 right here. So I'm going to choose this one right here. Double click it and it gets added into the image right here. I want to select an airline. So I click on select airline. This, this particular aircraft is going to be assigned to a specific airline. So I click select airline. I put in the code for that airline and let's say I want it to be JetBlue. JetBlue I don't believe flies a 787 but I'm just doing this for the purposes of showing how you showing you how you add aircraft. So I'll do JBU, JetBlue. So now it's JetBlue. I also want to assign a home location. Let's say I want to assign this to, again, I'm just picking something here. I'll select or click on set home location. And let's say Charlotte. Charlotte is a Kilo Charlie Lima Tango. And there's Charlotte Douglas right there. So that home location for the aircraft is now at Charlotte Douglas in uh, North Carolina. So I'm done with this now. So now when I want to use this aircraft, fly this aircraft, Volanta will track this aircraft and provide data. So right now we see that there's no hours because it's brand new. There's no total flights. There's no total distance that this aircraft has flown. There is no uh, profile to be seen here. So under flights, I go to flights. I won't see any flights that this aircraft has, has flown because there are none for this particular aircraft. So if I want to, let me back out of this. So I have this aircraft right now. We see the registration. We see the code for the ICAO for the aircraft and we see the airline so I'm done with this so now I want to schedule a flight so we're gonna end this flight here and then we're gonna start a new flight and the aircraft is going to be that aircraft that we just brought in you see the list here so I want to look for B787 do a search there's a B787 right there, and it's the JetBlue Airways. So I'll put that in, and we see there's no call sign or anything like that yet. But I can see the registration for the aircraft. I see the uh, aircraft type 787, add a plan, do it from SimBrief, and there we go. So now we're saying that this particular aircraft is going to fly this flight right here Miami to Mexico City I can pre-file it if I want you saw that earlier in the video so 
that is adding an aircraft. Again, anything that I have in Simbri for aircraft, I am going to add that into Volanta and let Volanta track that aircraft every flight that it does gather all that data. If I don't want this aircraft any longer, click on aircraft, go find it, we'll do V787, there it is right there, so I select it, come up here to this button here, I can remove the image or delete the aircraft or hide the aircraft. So since this is an aircraft that I don't have in SimBrief and not something that I'm going to use, I'll delete it. And confirm the deletion and it's gone. You'll see the number of aircraft that you have up here. There's 27 aircraft in the fleet right now. So it's that easy to add an aircraft and also to remove an aircraft or delete it if you don't want it in the system any longer. And uh, that's pretty much it. So you can see that it's a nice application. I love the data gathering that it does. And it brings me all of that data right out of Flight Simulator. And it's constantly tracking. There's no gaps in the tracking or the gathering of the data. As long as that flight is active then it will gather the data for you. I run this on my second monitor, so it's out of the way of the flight simulator itself. And um, that's it. I mean, the setup was really easy. It's really easy. Uh, the download is not a big download. And again, I can run Volanta out of the browser. I can run it over on my phone. I have the... Uh, Galaxy phone that's Android so I downloaded the app to my phone and I can also run it over on my iPad I've downloaded the app over on my iPad so what's handy about the phone is I can watch my flight without being in front of the computer watching uh, things go on as far as the flight is concerned so that's that's a handy feature all right so I believe that's about it for this video if you have any questions or would like to leave comments comments feel free to do so and we're out on this video this is virtual pilot flying we'll see you in another video and as usual we're back on the ground engines are shut down and the aircraft is cold and dark we'll see you in another video